Candice and Natalia from the podcast, Not a Single Fork. So much fun. I love cooking. Uh, you know, I, I, I just love it. I love cooking for others. Uh, I love, uh, I just, the whole process is, is wonderful. And uh, wait till you hear these two, these two ladies. They're great. I, I called them the run DMC of cooking. I, just because the way they weave in and out of each other, the way they speak and compliment each other, but just, they've got this great podcast where they bring up topics and they, they go way off it and they come back and uh, you can tell that there's true friendship there. Great background story where uh, where Candace, their family took over a, a restaurant uh, that was in trouble. And that's, you know, that's where she met Natalia. And, you know, the restaurant business is very tough and there was debt involved. They eventually closed it and it started doing some, there was a appliance store next door and they did some kind of cooking classes together and it just launched this, this, this whole kind of career, this not kind of a whole career, a whole, uh, you know, enterprise and, um, the girl can cook.com has, you know, great recipes. They do videos, they do all kinds of cooking, some questions that we talk about, you know, how do you cook a proper steak? What are foods that you order from restaurants and you order specifically because you can't cook them well? At home. I wonder what your answer is. Uh, we also talk about, you know, I have a big slant, of course, on Italian food. Does sugar belong in marinara? You know, I, one of my favorite questions, I have my answer, of course. They have theirs. But just a great uh, candid conversation on, uh, on cooking. I really enjoyed it. You will as well. Thanks for listening. Hi, I'm Joey Pins. People ask me, how did I lose 130 pounds? The quick answer is always discipline. I started my business, wasn't paying attention to my health, was eating too much, you know, drinking too much sweets. My daughter was born. Next thing I know, I'm pre-diabetic, I have hypertension. I knew something had to change. Discipline. I, like many of you, have faced many challenges in your career, in your family, in your life, in your faith. How did you attack them? How did you approach them? How did you solve them, hopefully? It all had to have some degree of discipline. I'm also asked, how did you found and start a tech business that lasted over 25 years? Discipline. I was committed to it, enjoyed technology, didn't enjoy some aspects of it, but knew it was necessary. Discipline. Our podcast mission, how do we use discipline to better ourselves and society? Join me, please, as I talk to interesting people and discuss how they use discipline in their family and their passion and their careers and how it helped them. Our podcast vision, growth through learning from others. Joey Pins Discipline Conversations. It'll be light and serious. Join us, please. Thank you for consideration. Have some fun. Yeah. Oh my goodness, Candice and Natalia, thank you so much for your time today. I'm very excited to talk to you. Uh, I, I guess I want to start with you, Candice, and talk about the the marriage and how psychology and the PhD combines with cooking. Uh, accidentally, yes. really, yeah, because um, I was cooked, you know, because that's just kind of what you have to do. But um, when uh, I decided that I didn't want to be a psychologist anymore and didn't really didn't want to do much of anything anymore, I kind of fell back to cooking. And realized at that time, which was the early 2000s, that there were things called personal chefs. And I thought, well, that's how I can kind of figure this out without having to go to culinary school. Because after getting a PhD, I really didn't want to go back to school again. Mm. So uh, I started off being a personal chef. And that led to my family buying a restaurant for terrible reasons. And um, then that's where Natalia and I met was in the restaurant business. So it was a good reason they bought the restaurant. It was a so good reason. It didn't start off that yeah, way. No, though. I know, but you at least ended up with it. Yes. Them. Yeah. Uh, yes. It turned out well. And then, um, and in the, and I, and through psychology, I was a teacher a lot of the time, not always, but a lot of the time. And I r realized that I could teach just about anything and started teaching people how to cook. And that's where we ended up today, actually. Mm. And you actually had a practice for a while with your ex-husband, but we're not going to go there. I was told uh, you, you said not to go there. Oh, I know. It's all right. 
I it's see. okay. It was just, that was a long time ago. <laughs> it was another lifetime. Yeah, it was another life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you did I said. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I was impressed. I was a. Uh, I ran a children's uh, unit on a in a psych hospital, and and then we had private practice together, and yeah. So yes, <laughs> I did have a practice. Should there be sugar in marinara? You know, it depends on the tomatoes. It depends It's got to be San Marzano, or what else would it be, right? Well, you can, but you know, it's the States, and you don't always get a true San Marzano, mm. you know? So I'll, I'll put, sometimes I'll put um, brown sugar, because hmm. I like the earthiness. I don't, I never put white sugar in it. Joe, do you cook? I do, but um, I do, but not very well. But you know, there's a famous scene in you know The Godfather where he said you have to put sugar. Don't forget to put sugar, and he puts white sugar in the marinara. Now, my my father's from near Naples, and you know, of course, this is an abomination. They would never do that. But they're Sicilian in The Godfather. Sicilian, yeah. But- yeah. Yeah. Sometimes like Northern Italians will put kind of carrots to kind of cut it up. I've seen, you know, Just chopped carrots. Yeah, carrots. Yeah. The sweetness. Yeah. Right. But, uh, you have one shirt that says, uh, legalized marinara, which is really, really yeah. funny. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you've done your uh, homework, I see. Well, yeah. and, uh, <laughs> I've been in there. There's a lot of black in there. You yeah. may have noticed. <laughs> I wear black as well. I'm from the Northeast. Yeah, it's very <laughs> slimming. Uh, but again, uh, sugar and the it's marinara. I don't should be should not be sweet. Well, it's a balance thing. Mm. So if your tomatoes are too acidic, because tomatoes are typically acidic, and if you, right. in fact, we just did, we just did an episode on canned tomatoes. Yeah, I loved it. And and that's the thing is that you if you get a good canned tomato. And you get you. I guess I should say you get lucky, and you get a really good can of pota- potato. Potatoes. I do that again. I do that all the time. So potatoes. similar. Tomatoes. Yeah, so tomatoes, similar. potato, potato, tomato, tomato. Um, Let's so, call the whole thing off. Yes, please. Um, but you don't really have to do anything to them mm. when you get a really acidic, good one. But they're, they're acidic. Great, yeah, you need to add that sweetness. Yeah, sometimes I'll I'll put in a in in an, in the. Um, I wouldn't say that instead necessarily of sugar, but I'll usually I'll try a parm rind first Mm. to kind of mellow it. Um, But sometimes you just, I've heard people putting um, baking soda into tomatoes also. Yeah. To count to, uh, you know, cause it's that alkaline acid balance thing. I've never done that personally. Yeah, that sounds. Uh, and I saw a video once about the. Ma- they said there's like a magic time uh, where San Marzano tomatoes, where you should cook. If it goes beyond this time, do it for a long time. If it's beyond, if it's below this time, just do it quickly. It's like seven or eight minutes or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you adhere to that? Do you agree? I don't know if that's the case with fresh San Marzanos, but I don't. Mm. I don't. I haven't heard about that with the canned variety. Because I think they've already been taken beyond that magic moment. Right. <laughs> oh, very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> That's true because I've seen San Marzano. You can buy them at the market, but I've never made. Well, you talk about this in your episode about you know can versus fresh. I do, I don't really. Well, I guess you say it too. You don't really see a lot of fresh San Marzano tomatoes made marinara. You want to just eat those in a salad or just eat out those of hand. Yeah. In raw. Really? Yeah. And. Uh, Making any kind of marinara without San Marzano, is that good? It's possible. It's possible. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sure. It's possible. It's not as good. Right. Um, but, okay, so one of my, well, secrets to a fault. This is actually kind of like a la Julia Child. Sometimes people don't know the difference. It's like, you know, when you drop the lamb in the kitchen and people, no one saw you, mm. you yeah. just pick mm. it back up. It's kind of the same thing. You know, as if they, if people will know, if I, if I'm cooking for Italians, huh, I'm not going to give them anything except right. San Marzano's, right, but right. Americans and Oklahomans, you know, Papa can of hunts. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And you, you both have a great, well, you both have your, uh, your viewpoints on a, a very popular, you know, Italian American restaurant here that, you know, I certainly don't go to anymore. Uh, the Olive Garden. Uh, yes. The Olive Garden. Yes. The Olive Garden. The OG. <laughs> That's right. The OG. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I get teased every once in a while, you know, I'm going to give you an Olive Garden, uh, you know, gift card or something. And, uh, and my comment, of course, is that I wouldn't give it to a homeless person. But look, the the meat, <laughs> I mean, the the breadsticks are just are very good, right? Uh, yeah. One of you mentioned seeing Jimmy Fallon and and Post Malone there, that yeah. video that they had a while ago. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's interesting to me to note that the tomatoes were actually bought brought from from here, from like Mexico to Italy. They were actually like Italians were only introduced to the tomato hundred years ago, something like that. Yeah, it hasn't been a tremendously long time. Yeah. It's sort of like, uh, it's like pasta, you know? Pasta is not, doesn't originate in Italy. Thank you, China. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, I often tell uh, the peop the difference between noodles and pasta is, you know, wheat and rice. But, uh, you know, still, my relatives eat very little pasta in Italy. They, you know, on Sunday, they have, you know, only like this much. But, I mean, it's a lot of green. The Mediterranean diet is very different than the perception here in in the U.S., where it's a, a lot of times it's quantity over quality. It's just pounds of pasta and meatballs and, and big, cheese. And cheese, and yeah, like yeah. yellow cheese. <laughs> we when we do our uh, when we do our pasta classes and we we actually are teaching people how to make pasta. Ah. Uh, I always have to give them the uh, the spiel about you know in Italy it's all about the pasta and not about the sauce. So the sauce mm. is like a condiment because otherwise they get their plates of pasta and they're like, where's my sauce? And my cheese. And then and my... just gets all chefy on it. And then <laughs> they <laughs> cry and then we never see them again. <laughs> That's not really That's true. Not true. But, not it's really, close. but it's close. <laughs> I love that term chefy you guys use. That's that's very uh very cool. So when when I make pasta for my friends, I just use semolina, you know, zero flour and then just water and a little bit of salt. So how do you add eggs? Well, it uh, we have two different classes. Well, we have more than that, but we have two different pasta classes. One is egg pasta, which mm. is actually uh Lydia Bastianich's recipe. So yeah. it's, it's called poor man's pasta. So it's just a two egg pasta, but it's easy for, um, beginners to work with. So, um, it's, it's easier to handle. I shouldn't, it's, I was going to say it's easy to handle, but it's easier to handle mm. for people who have never made pasta. But then we have a hand but roll. That's an all purpose flour. Yeah. We use all purpose yeah. flour in uh. that one. Yeah. Um, but then we have our handmade Sicilian Southern style pasta class where it is just uh, semolina and uh, water. Just semolina and water. That's it. And a little salt. Nope. No, water no salt. Ah, well, no yeah. Meat. When we, when we boil the pasta, but otherwise there's no salt in the pasta dough. Very interesting. And you only boil it for a minute, right? Well, it, technically that, that's true, but in our classes, we typically have to boil it longer than that because they don't quite have the, we have all different shapes. The je ne sais quoi right. <laughs> for, for making pasta shapes. So they're, you know, they're learning. So we have some, um, pretty toothsome pasta in there. Mm. But it's it's still kind of it's al dente. It's still a little hard. It's not mushy. Well, the the handmade class uh is definitely al dente uh, mm. to toothy, but the the um regular what we call pasta 101, the the pasta tends to be soft um uh, because we don't dry it. We don't have time to dry it in the class. I see. So it never has a really an opportunity to be al dente. Have you ever made a, a timpani or timpani? Yes, timpano. Timpano, yeah. yeah. So you make a big sheet and you put it in the bowl and you yeah. put the layers in oh, and you God, fold it, it on was, top. It was days, wasn't it? Three days. Yeah. Why did why three days? Well, it's a process. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because I mean, and I it's been it was for a oh we did the big night. 
uh, menu. W- wonderful movie. Yeah. Yes. We did Underrated. From the movie, and we did a wine. Yeah. Movie. yeah. They so made you have the to timpano. make meatballs. Yeah. You have to make meatballs. Yeah. You have to make eggs. The, hard boiled yeah, eggs. You have to do yeah. it, sausage uh, every single step. So yeah. 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 Uh, spoiler alert! Yeah, Louis Prima never shows up, but they have a wonderful time in that movie. Yeah, yes, yes. Isabella yeah. Rossellini, it's, and yeah. yeah, it's a lifetime. <laughs> but yeah, really yeah, we. It's really hard. It's very out. heavy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, and you did you put marinara on it? Not over the top. No, it was everything was contained inside the timpano. And then when it came out, I I cooked it in one of the. Um, the Dutch ovens, mm-hmm. and then it, and then you slice it, and it comes out like a slice of cake, and it's so. I think I have pictures up on it somewhere, but then we kind of put it on its side, and then we just laid a little marinara over it. Yeah, we did not. We just uh, hmm. it was very juicy, <laughs> so uh. we flipped it. When we fl- I used a big porcelain. Actually, it was I think it was called a timpano bowl. It's huge. Whoa. It was a huge bowl, yeah. and uh, we flipped it out, and then yes, cut wedges. But I don't think we served it with marinara, did we? Honestly, I can't remember. I don't think we don't did. did. Now, was that the entree? No, no. That was like course number three or four, something like oh. that. We actually, we had a meat course. So we did a traditional uh, seven, eight course Italian menu. My goodness, that must be something. And then somebody, when they hire you, they say, we want an Italian menu. They, they choose the menu with you? I usually guide them and unless they have uh, preferences for, you know, um, you know, they don't, allergies or they just don't like something in particular. Otherwise I set the menu. I don't mean to dominate the whole conversation with Italian cooking, but it's something that I, I, I like. I, the, the, the vast difference, of course, in Southern Italy is a lot of olive oil. And then in the North, there's a lot of dairy, a lot of, Butter and yeah. milk, yeah, yeah. A little poor and different climate in the south, and, the, and there was just never so like uh, uh, Alfredo and uh, carbonara. Well, carbonara not as much, but it just didn't have just had some cheese, but didn't have a lot of the the, the dairy in it. Uh, but just a vast difference. You have a great episode where you both talk about things that you want to order, or you order at restaurants because you don't want to make it home. Yeah. And I wonder whoever's listening will come up with some things. But the first thing you said is what I was thinking right away. Sushi. 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 Yeah. Never I mean, making just, sushi. Never. Uh-uh. Never, ever, ever. Yeah. yeah. And we get, we have quite a few people who ask us if we're, really? if we ever do a sushi class. It's like, no, we're not trained to do sushi. And if you're not, to me, it's kind of um, offensive. Because it's so horrible. Mm. <laughs> if you're just together. slapping it together. I mean, I guess if you just get some crabby crab and some and some cucumber and some cream cheese and slap roll it, it roll rice. it up in some nori and then I mean, you call it good. You want, then get after it. Yeah, you know, make a bowl or something. Yeah, but. but sashimi and nigiri, you know, right? Not going to do that. You say it's offensive because it doesn't honor the art of mm-hmm. the of the. Uh, I, I see. Yeah, yeah. So I seriously trained. Have you watched? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 There was the that big movie Jiro. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I uh, dream of sushi or what? Dreaming yeah. of sushi yeah. or something yeah. like that. Yes, yeah, like that. Where the father didn't let the son. He only could touch the rice for like ten years or something. He wouldn't even yeah, let him touch exactly. the fish. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, you're thinking no, of uh, Bourdain's. Yeah. Comic books yeah. Thing. yeah, yeah. Oh, he, Bourdain had a. Comic. Yeah. yeah, I guess I could see that. You two had a very interesting. You guys met by accident, and now you're fast friends. Tell, tell, uh, remind me how you met. You, you, Go you. Ahead. <laughs> I've been talking a lot. Okay, I, just jump in. That's okay. I know that's yeah. that is what we do. <laughs> we do. Yeah, it is what you do. Yeah. Potatoes, and I'm just kind of oh, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'll add the colorful commentary. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Uh, my family bought this failing restaurant. It actually wasn't failing horribly at the time, but it had a lot of debt. And the chef had, like a lot of chefs, had a drug problem. Mm. And he almost killed himself accidentally. So they didn't have a chef. The woman who ran the restaurant and owned the restaurant basically just was, she just wanted to get rid of it. 
And so my family who had never owned a restaurant, never before. owned a restaurant. And wow. we were foodies. We're clearly foodies and knew a lot about food, but we didn't know anything about the restaurant business. And I was like, yeah, you know, we have other businesses. How hard can it be? I didn't say that. Right. For, for the record, I did not say that. But we all ended up with it. And um, over the course of the, how, was it two years that we had it? Yeah, I think it was two years. It was about two, mind, two, yeah. and two and a half years that we had the restaurant. Um, I ended up having more. I started off being just, I was in the background. I didn't do much of anything. And then over the course of crazy events, uh, I ended up staff. and losing staff. I mm. took over part of the kitchen duties. And so that's how I became restaurant trained. And then then front of the house kind of went to hell and I took over front of the house and then Natalia, Jeez. I can't remember in the whole scheme of things when you started, but it was right before you were really there a lot because when I, I started running the bar doing the, because it's what I've always done. Natalia, can you come a little closer to the mic? She has I a have that problem. Yeah. That's what she likes to do. She just likes to go off, you know, wherever. <laughs> Back here guys. <laughs> Uh, I, I thanks was, for telling her that because I tell her that all the time. <laughs> and, me now. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, was running. The, I was bartending. I'd been bartending since I was eighteen. Since I should because I lived in Tampa and you could do Tampa. That Tampa yeah, yeah. I didn't know you couldn't do that here, but so I still did it here. Um, and then uh, she was kind of hostessing most of the time. Yeah, and I then lunch, there. lunch. I ran the kitchen, and then I would hostess at night. And so we spent a lot of time pretty close and talking because the hostess stand was right next to the bar and yeah i think you know candace would have some drinks and because i was bored and yeah <laughs> and uh we got to know each other really well yeah yeah and that's kind of how it all started and the rest is history the rest is history yeah, yeah. so yeah. when the restaurant uh folded i had already worked um well there was a an appliance gallery next door. We were in kind of a retail center. Right, so there was an appliance yeah. gallery next door that was basically a Viking gallery. And the manager there had a teaching kitchen. So she asked me when she had brought other chefs in to do demos, demos mm -hmm. and asked me if I wanted to do a demo. So I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? So I just flew by the seat of my pants and I had I would like come over and bring cocktails to everybody. Yes. And we had like the first time, the first class was like seven or eight women and, mm -hmm. and they basically, it was a demo. It wasn't an, not, it wasn't anything like what we do now. And, but I loved it. It was so much fun. And I thought, well, this is what I really want to do. I want to teach people about food and how to cook. So when the restaurant failed, it was like, okay, we got to find a place to do this. And it was like, do you want to do this too? And she's like, whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, well, yeah. What else am I going to do? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Let's do it. So that's kind of how it all happened. Have you ever uh, seen the the show on Hulu, The Bear? Yes. Oh, yeah. Real? Is it similar? Is it real? It, well, it's how, pretty good. You? Yeah. yeah, it is good, isn't when it? They're, uh, I don't know if you saw the whole thing, but when the... Um, the tickets start running. Yeah. We all have. I mean, and I now just thinking about it, I got chills. Wow. When the tickets start running like that, it, you know, talk about uh, uh, having PTSD. Oh my wow. God. You can't even imagine what it's like when the tickets are running out of control and you can't keep up. Oh my God. Yeah. So, yes, it's quite authentic. They did yeah, a really good it, job. It, it, yeah, I, I have some friends who own some restaurants as well. And uh, if I remember correctly in the scene, they set up a new system and it recorded a bunch. And then when they opened in the morning, they were all from the night before, pre-orders, pre I think they were. Mm -hmm. And there was hundreds of tickets coming out of the printer and there was just panic going on. And the way that they they can't afford anything and they're in debt. And uh, night. Yeah. It yeah really welcome is. to the restaurant Every business. Night in the restaurant, sure. There's always something wow. going on or broken or... Yeah, I'm freaking out or yeah, staffing issues and then Something. vendors yeah. and uh, and customers and uh, I don't know the old I always hear never invest in a restaurant or a gym. Yeah, uh, but but we need restaurants though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's some of us who are just crazy enough to do it. 
All right. I love it. Especially the non-chain restaurants. No offense to them, and I'm, but I just, uh, you know, I prefer. I prefer a, a, a you know a different menu. When I go, when my friends go, when friends go to Italy, I always give them three pieces of, of advice. I say, first, ask the cops where they eat. Everybody else gets paid. Maitre d's, taxi drivers, they all get paid to push people. The cops will tell you the truth. <laughs> Secondly, if the menu is in uh, is in English, it's a bad sign. It should be in Italian and even better if it's on a chalkboard, that means it's changes every day. And then third, as far as wine, drink the wine in the carafe. The local wine is just as good and often mostly less expensive. It's just as good as anything bottled. So those are the, and they all have to deal with food. So I guess that's where my heart is. Yeah. Yeah. Those are, those are really good. good. (laughs) Take them. (laughs) The next topic for your podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Joe's tips. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, And then you were on a a chef show where you showed up in Jersey city early in the morning and you're in a warehouse and (laughs) you won the first round and got cheated out of the second. Yeah, I did. Uh, Welcome to the wonderful world of food network. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and, and, you know, the thing is, it's, it was an auditioning process and I really wanted to do it. And I've really always wanted to, I have a theater minor, so I, you know, and I have a background in theater and I was in radio. That's why I stay close to the mic. Your voice. And so, um, I just have this need to perform. That's, uh, that also is helpful in our classes as well. But, Mm. um, I, I really wanted to do a food network show and I, you know, I kept applying. So I finally got cooks versus cons and it was, you know, it's a really, it's an eye opening experience. Not really anything. I was surprised that happened. Frankly, mm. um, I really wasn't surprised that they threw us in a warehouse and we were there from 7am to midnight and it was freezing and they didn't really, you know, we were just kind of, we, we weren't the talent. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> we were the, um, you know, we were there just to make it interesting. The talent was the judges and they were great. Mm. I mean, Alice Guarnicelli and uh, Simon Majumdar, they were great. Um, Very nice to work with. And then Jeffrey Zakarian, you know, the guy is, I'm, I guess he's a great chef, but uh, you know how he got his own show. I don't know. I don't know about that. But it was, it was fun. And yes, I won the first round and I should have won the second round. I should have won the money round. Um, except that Simon thought I put too much dried oregano in my tomato sauce. Mm. Yeah. And I still put dried, I still put dried oregano in my tomato sauce. Yeah, I do too, by the way. Not that that (laughs) matters at all. Uh, There's lots of uh, examples where you wonder why people have their own shows, by the way, not just in in cooking. Uh, But people listen and you know that that drives it i guess and those kinds of shows are they just as as we're presented on tv where you just kind of thrown this stuff and you have minutes to get the ingredients together and it's not like that at all no no it's it's all very well orchestrated is it yeah now the time that you have to cook is it's that's real is that's real but a lot of the other stuff is you know you know what's getting ready to happen it's not as, is that, as it appears no but it but nobody knows what the, who the winner is going to be correct okay yeah all right i didn't don't want to hear that no yeah. no no, <laughs> no they <laughs> stop short with that i see <laughs> they curate everything else but <laughs> yeah yeah uh i want to say a quick thing about your style i i love it both of you i don't know if you know the, the rap group run dmc but the way you kind of go in between each other it reminds me of the way they perform I'm just well, gonna, I don't know. Yeah, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 That. Maybe the run DMC of cooking. I, I don't know. Ooh, but okay. <laughs> We're going to take that. Definitely We're taking that. that. Yeah. The, you, you, the way you weave in and out and there's, there's seldom any uh, overlap. What the heck is Salisbury steak? Uh, <laughs> I've learned about it too. Yeah. I loved it. I love yeah. what you talked. Tell us again. Uh, Salisbury steak is definitely a throw. I remember it from my childhood. Me too. Me um, too. And so it's not steak at all. It's just a meat patty with I some. I thought it was a football. It, it looked like a football. <laughs> it's a football. It did look like a, I made footballs out of meat. 
<laughs> and uh, with mushroom and onion gravy. But what was that? Well, there was an original purpose for Salisbury. Oh, Civil oh, War. Yeah. yeah. The, um, so back during the Civil War, all the soldiers were dying because they didn't have any protein. And so Dr. Salisbury, what was his first name? James? I don't know. But anyway, he came up with this theory that if we gave these guys ground meat, Patties. well, just wait a minute, ground meat first, <laughs> that, that, that would get protein into their system faster. And then the, then the South could rise again. Mm. And I don't know which side he was on, but anyway, um, they were all dying. So it didn't really matter, I guess. But, um, he created this meat patty and they made it palatable with onion gravy. And then I guess they threw mushroom. I don't know how they had mushrooms, frankly, but I think mm. that probably happened later on. But yeah, so that's how they got these guys to to stop dying. <laughs> they got protein into their diet with Salisbury steak. So they named it after, or he maybe he named it after himself, so. which is probably what happened. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's where Salisbury steak came from. Have you had it before? As a kid, we they served it in school. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. We so that we call it mystery <laughs> mystery meat. <laughs> Keep you guys alive. Yeah, mystery yeah. mystery <laughs> meat. Yeah. I like to think I had plenty of protein, but it was, uh, <laughs> it was, uh, I, I just remember at middle school, maybe they, they, they served it. And then there was a time where TV dinners got popular. My family never really participated in that, but I remember yeah. seeing them anyway. Yeah. Uh, and, um, so uh, how, how do you cook a steak? I mean, here's the, I mean, there's so many a ways. What's a real steak? A real steak. Okay. Well, we do a lot of steak classes being in yeah. Oklahoma, a lot of steak and, lot potatoes. Of steak and potatoes. Yeah. We actually have a lot of people who, especially males who will not eat anything green. So mm. true story. yeah, it's their, it's their staple in life and they don't know how to cook that. They think they know how to cook it, but they mm. don't. So you have to, your, whatever steak, it, I mean, if it's a good steak in terms of grilling steak, so, you know, you need a ribeye, you need a strip, you need something like that. And you have to have it at room temperature so that when it hits the grill, it doesn't tense up mm. and uh, become tough right from the get go. Then you have to just let it do its thing. You know, usually it's five to seven minutes per side and you don't poke it and you don't, you know, don't turn it, it over with a fork. You don't it. turn it over, you know, 500 times because all those things toughen um, a steak. I mean, it's a, it's a muscle basically. And mm. so, uh, you turn it once you let it finish on the second side. And then when you, when you get it to the temperature you want, which should be medium rare, um, you let it rest five minutes and then cut it. You don't cut it right away because it's at, it, it is uh, tensed up when it comes off mm. the grill. So all of the juices are held right in the center of the steak and you need to allow time for the juices to distribute. So once they're distributed, which takes about five minutes for a steak, longer for big roasts, and then you can cut it. And then you've got a nice juicy piece of meat that's got the juices distributed throughout and it doesn't all come pouring out when you cut it open. How about those who kind of want to singe everything and then bake it? Like a reverse sear? Yeah. Uh, that's a really good technique, frankly. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you cook it, you can, well, and even with a reverse sear, um, you, you sear it off uh, just really quickly and then put it in the oven at like 250. Right. And for an hour or two, depending on what size the meat is, and then you can finish it again on the stovetop with, because usually it just kind of looks gray and ugly. Sear it and then you, uh, you still have to go through the same process of just letting it rest for a minute and then cutting it but yeah reverse sear i i am i'm a big fan and then you know some butter and maybe some some herbs and um salt it, pepper and olive oil yeah keep it simple yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, you know uh the biggest you know men get real territorial with their grill the, the biggest th th thing and i'm no expert but but the biggest thing i see is when they're cooking burgers a lot of times they like do the thing where they press the meat down and all the juices go into what are you doing we want a juicy burger why are you getting rid of it all 
I, I don't I don't have you're a both good shaking your head. I don't yeah. have a good yeah. answer. It's terrible. For that. No. It's terrible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sad. it's terrible. I uh I'll tell you a a big mistake I made uh when I was married. Uh a lot of my ex-wife's friends were vegans, so I brought a bunch of the vegan burgers and uh, you know, the grill has two levels and I made the mistake of putting the vegan burgers on the bottom and I put the hamburgers on the top and oh. the drippings <laughs> went yeah. down and I got so many compliments on the vegan burgers. Like, where did you get these? How did you cook them? <laughs> and I said, well, it's a little secret. I, yeah, there's a little tip for those out there, I, I, I guess. Uh, but, uh, so, Olive oil. So, I mean, I only touch, you know, extra virgin olive oil, but the way they do it here in the States and the way they do it in Europe is so different. And here's just too much about money. What are your thoughts on olive oil? Well, I think for just kind of general sauteing, I think a middle of the road olive oil is fine. Mm. You don't really need a big fat finishing oil for that, but for pasta, for steak, things like that. Yeah. You want to go all out and have a beautiful, mm. big, delicious olive oil. Yeah. And some of those real expensive ones that have hints of garlic and, and things like, I don't even like to cook those. I like to just put those on top. Oh of, yeah, yeah, for sure. Be cooking those. Yeah. Yeah. And for those men out there who won't eat <laughs> greens, what's the problem, gentlemen? I mean, you put some extra virgin olive oil with some of these hints of garlic on some it's just sauteed spinach. I just had some this morning with some eggs and uh, you just try to eat the rainbow. It's, it's, it's not the enemy. It's, it's, it's going to help. Dude, we had a grown ass man, like a dentist, like an educated he was a dentist, grown a ass professional man who came to class. They sat down to eat and he wasn't eating. I think we did. I can't remember if that it was, was that was a Valentine's Day class. We had strawberries. And we do drunken chocolate dipped strawberries for Valentine's Day because, you know, sexy, sexy, all that. Sure, shit. sure. So he wasn't eating them. And I was like, dude, what's wrong? Like, why aren't you? And he's like, I don't eat fruits or vegetables. <laughs> he had never had a strawberry. His whole life. Wow. I'm yeah. like, you don't eat fruits and vegetables? Yeah. What the fuck are you eating? I don't know. Meat and, meat and oh, potatoes. Meat, uh, it's a vegetable. Well, but they don't think that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, just got to eat that rainbow. I, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's just, just yeah. but you've got to remember too, like, it's what the, a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times it's what people are raised on. Mm. So if they're not introduced to things, you know, when they're 40 years old, a lot of them are like, well, I'm not going to eat it now. Yeah. You know? I've survived this long. Why am I going to eat it now? Yeah. We've, mm. we've introduced a lot of people to mushrooms. To mushrooms, that's one thing. Yeah. But a yeah. lot of different foods that they just didn't grow up eating. And if they did, if they did eat it, it was fried or out of a can. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Out of a can no. Yeah, like I know. Mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one aisle over. I don't it's understand. Not, it's, it's, it's no. It's, it's just before you get to the can aisle. It's that's a good point. That's it's on the perimeter. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was yeah. What we we talk we about about, uh, about shopping in the perimeter. Yeah. You yes. know, you don't go into those aisles. No, don't no, go don't go in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stay on the stay on the uh, uh, outside. It just it helps so much. Uh, those dark leafy greens are just so are just so good. And yeah. I just you lightly cook them with some great olive oil and some salt and pepper and. I don't know, spice of your choice. The problem is that the American, my opinion, the American public is addicted to sugar. I mean, a lot of times, even mixed spices that you buy, I look at the ingredients and why do they add sugar and spices? Um, and so they just kind of need that sweetness in everything we well, do. Well, you know, they, they even put, uh, they put sugar in the uh, oil that they fry McDonald's French fries in. Mm, so you can be addicted to it. Mm -hmm. Do they put sugar in it? Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. That shit is drugs. Yeah. yeah. It really is. Really, the, yeah. I don't care. It you really are. is. You just can't stop eating those fucking fries. They're not my favorite. Oh, God. Yeah, the fries. Yeah, yeah. I just don't, and get, like, them. I just don't get them anymore. No, you can't. Yeah. 
you, you can't do it. Yeah. And like duck fat fries. I mean, yeah, I see oh. that on a menu. It's mine. I get that it. duck 100%. fat. It's good oh. for you. You know, anything duck fat is good for you. Anything with truffle oil on it on a menu, truffle. I'm fucking getting it. Now, we have, a big, we have a big discussion about truffle oil, though, oh. because truffle oil is not really truffle oil. I know. Mm. She I still likes it. it. I love she still it. likes it. I'll put it on a baked potato. Like, I don't give mm-hmm. a shit. It's expensive. You know, I, there's a market here in St. Saint, Saint Petersburg and uh, there's a local truffle person there and he gets, you know, the pigs that, you know, find the truffles. I guess in Italy, it's more about the dogs these yeah, days. Is, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, and, you know, he has like a little block of it and it's, you know, a couple thousand dollars, of yeah. you know, and it induces it into the into the trouble, but it is damn tasty. Oh God. It is very good. And it's so kind of smoky and it's earthy mm-hmm. and it's, you just can't, it's can't dirty. get enough. Yeah. Oh, and those seed oils that they kind of, uh, deep fry everything in it. I mean, those are just, I mean, they're just horrendous for you. Oh yeah. Like the grape <laughs> seed like oil or what? Grape yeah. seed oil. All those are like, they're like petroleum, right? They're just like, oh, when you, but, um, <laughs> Yeah, but, but McDonald's really uses it. Deep fry stuff, like yeah, we're we're not, we we're don't not deep, deep fry. We don't deep fry anything. Yeah. You quick fry, right? Mm-hmm. If you're gonna fry, yeah. if we fry, yeah, we just saute yeah, we'll, or shallow saute. fry some things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of the foods that you mentioned uh, that was mentioned that you that you often buy at restaurants and don't cook is fried chicken. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Uh, well, uh, that's me. That's you. Not you. But yeah. I don't, I'm I, a fried chicken person. I didn't grow up with fried chicken. Yeah. So I don't wake up uh, in the morning and go, I really want some fucking fried chicken today. Like that is not, I don't think I've ever had that thought. But when someone else suggests <laughs> it, I'm like, yeah, if like, I said, hey, I'm you want to come over and eat some fried chicken? You'd be like, I'll be yeah, there. I'm in. I'll be yeah. There. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Of course. I mean, I'm not, here's the thing. I was taught at a very young age that you do not turn down food or wine. That's right. So <laughs> oh, wow. fried chicken, I'm in. Yeah. Yeah, when I wasn't brought up on fried chicken either, but I I've had it at some really you know good restaurants and my my good you know my mother's from Nova Scotia where, you know my father tells a story, <clears throat> who I mentioned is from Italy when the first time he went there, the, the family to make him feel at home put some uh, tomato soup and some Uh-oh. overcooked uh, uh, spaghetti. Uh, to kind of say, well, this is what you have, right? Nice. This is what you, so this was his equivalent of, yeah, of tomato uh, oh, of sauce. And yeah. so very bland, very, um, so that, you know, so her side was very different, but my father obviously was very, very different. You know, my grandmother, when I was over there, I was surprised how often she would cook like uh, potato wedges and quick fry them. People don't uh-huh. think that happens a lot in Southern Italy. There's so much yeah. potatoes and they just kind of quick fry them. Yeah, a lot of roasted uh, potatoes like that. Roasted yeah. potatoes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You also talk a lot about mayonnaise. You, you, uh, I'm not a fan. <laughs> At all? No, I don't do mayonnaise or ketchup. Oh. Do you do mustard? Are you a mustard guy? Only if it's brown. Yellow mustard is not really mustard, is it? Well, uh, yeah, it, it, it is. It's just kind of harsh. I agree. My no. mom does laugh at yellow mustard. She does think it's yeah. funny. Well, I call it ballpark real. mustard. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. I could see that. Yeah. It's like yeah. the single packets of cheese in the plastic <laughs> container. That's what yellow mustard mm. is. <laughs> yeah. So no, do you eat sour cream? Uh, When it's introduced in others, sure. A sour cream I'll do. And yourself? Oh my god! Oh yeah, yes. sour yeah, yeah. Cream. I just sometimes the mayonnaise and the sour cream for some reason go hand in hand with people. If they, uh, don't, like they don't like sour cream, white and creamy. I don't fucking know. They're totally different to me. They don't. They're not anything. But the we same. made some mayonnaise that was amazing. I don't know if you heard or saw or I did experienced that from us, but it was really good and very simple to make. Yeah, yeah, and it's light is the thing that when you make it yourself. Um, well, because you control your ingredients, but it's That's just, right. it's a recipe from, uh, Kenji Lopez alt. And he just, you know, he's just the, the guru of the kitchen science now anyway, but his recipes are so approachable and we just have to try them all the time. He's like two, right. two minute mayonnaise. It's like, all right, let's do it. And it was. And like aioli may- mayonnaise, whenever I see that, I get it. But when you're cooking it, you're se- when you're creating it yourself, you're putting olive oil in it, or you're putting seed oil. Oh uh, no, we used we used olive oil. Yeah, see, that's a big difference. And as far as ketchup, it's all sugar, and it it just dominates too much. It does. I love, uh, I love ketchup. Too. <laughs> see, I don't touch it at all. Yeah, it just seems yeah. to dominate. It's all I can taste. My and favorite. barbecue sauce. 
Go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say my favorite thing on a French fry is ketchup and mustard, or ketchup and mayonnaise uh, mixed together. Ah, uh, mixed together. <laughs> Isn't that Russian dressing? Is Russian it's dressing? Close. It's close. It's close. It's not quite. Yeah. yeah. What were you going to say? Sorry. Barbecue sauce. Uh, barbecue sauce. I'm a sucker for. I spent a lot of time in Dallas and uh, in Texas, and they just do it very differently there, and I just mm -hmm. love it. And it's amazing how, you know, I, I love rich food and, uh, you know, deep food, but then, uh, you know, a great hamburger. I cannot turn that down, you know, that that's done correct, you know, on a brioche bun and with great mayonnaise and, with the and a little egg. bit of a fried egg on it. Sure. And, mm -hmm. You know, I, it's uh, I, I uh, I'm a sucker for it, ladies. Yeah. I'm a sucker for it, a absolutely. You also talk about how you don't really get how to cook Thai and like Indian food. They just they just do it so differently there. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's such an art, I think. You know, well, there's so many different spices like, and herbs yeah. that they use, right? And, just, and and so many in one dish. Mm. You know. But the way, especially, I mean, you're you love Indian food, and I unfortunately have not really had great Indian food. But I'll tell you, with Thai food, that's that's balance on a plate. It the is. way they do it is amazing. Yeah, yeah. I often say when I go to those places and I see it's a little hole in the wall, and I read some good reviews, I'm like, you know, what do you guys eat here? Can you tell me? You know, can you? It's like, just can make me that. Yeah. Just you know, I just try to, and and they get excited, yeah. right? <laughs> they yeah. get excited well, about it. somewhere, and there's you know Thai people eating right at the Thai restaurant. Yeah. I'm going to stay. Yeah. No That's kidding. right. Yeah. yeah, yeah we have some stay. really good uh, Vietnamese restaurants. We do. We really do. Mm. And when you walk in and you see the Vietnamese, you know, population, Families family, everybody, everybody there. And it's like, all right, this is a good one. Mm -hmm. I remember in in Manhattan in the you know in the eighties there were some great Italian restaurants. Nobody can afford it there anymore, so they got to go out to Brooklyn. But I remember this one place. There was a, <laughs> yeah. there was a, and even Brooklyn they can't afford now. By the way, so they're going out to Jersey and Connecticut. But uh, <laughs> uh, so it, it would you know we'd walk up and there's like you know it's just a classic Italian place and there was no menus and the, the, the he would come up and say wouldn't say anything. The wine would be put on, the salads would be put on and the soups would be put on and pasta, would, you know, there'd be like all these courses that would come out and come out again, no menus. And then when it got to the meat, he would say, you know, fish, pork, or, or chicken, you know, and he'd look at us and we would, we would answer, you know, and, <laughs> and it would come out <laughs> and, and it was prepared differently and it was wonderful. And it was an hour and it was, there'd be, you know, a pair of teeth at the end. And of course, you know, just a traditional Italian and, you know, he comes back, and like, are you done? And it was wonderful. And so he'd go over to the bartender and the bartender would kind of look over at us and kind of wave his hand a little bit. And he'd come back over and he said, okay, a hundred dollars, you know? And, and so we'd, we'd pay in cash and it was just wonderful. And you just, you can't, you don't see that anymore. And it was cash and it was, you know, wonderful. And it was just, you know, the true kind of uh, Italian experience in the, in the States. It's just uh -huh. a wonderful experience when it's kind of real local like that. And, oh, yeah. uh, yeah, I, I I I miss it. So, ladies, I always talk about you know I lost a lot of weight. People ask me how I started a business way back when, and I I was eating bad food too often and working too much, and I got up to three hundred forty pounds. And and the doctor said I'm not going to see my daughter graduate unless I lose the weight. And so I lost a bunch of weight. People ask me how I did it, and I always say discipline. I just got focused and I got discipline. How does discipline play a role in both of your lives? You go. <laughs> she just shows up. <laughs> yeah. DMC says the run. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, you know, I, you know, I'm, uh, I, for better or for worse, I grew up in a disciplined white Anglo-Saxon Protestant family, uh, where work was valued and there just wasn't really any question about you know, that you, my, my mother was a doer Scott and, you know, there was no kind of nonsense going forward at any point. And she, she had to take over. My father died when I was little. She took over the business that was seriously in debt, got it out of debt, thought she wanted to go back to being a homemaker and realized, no, that's boring now. So then she created hmm. a new business, which was basically the same thing that my father did, but he, she just took it to the next level. 
And so I was just surrounded by discipline. My mom was one who, when she decided she was going to stop smoking, she, she put a pack of cigarettes up in the cabinet, an unopened pack of cigarettes up in the cabinet, just to prove to herself and everyone else that all it took was discipline to not wow. smoke. Wow. So that was what I grew up with. So discipline to me is just sort of a, that's just kind of in my genes, I guess. I don't, you know, in comparison to my mother and my discipline, I think I have moments where I just, you know, there are things that have to be done and I'm a planner and I'm an organizer and I get them done. But it doesn't occur to me, I guess, at that point that I'm terribly disciplined because it's just kind of part of my personality. My older daughter, uh, I, <laughs> I made her grow up as a ballet dancer um, and so she is very disciplined. She's not a dancer anymore, but she was, it was a really, it was one of those experiences that, um, I didn't, I didn't ever have to worry about where she was. Uh. I always knew where she was. She was in the ballet studio and, uh, and it taught her a lot. And she is a very successful person herself, business and, and life, I think. But, um, it's just, I, it's just one of those things where, um, it just, I, I hate to say second nature, but kind of second nature. It's just something I do that I, if I have to do something, I plan it out and I do it. And my mom also always said, can't was not in her vocabulary. Hmm. And so I just kind of go with it. And it's like, I if no, don't tell me I can't do something. Cause I'm going to show you that I can. Having a pack of cigarettes is temptation and proving that because if there's bad food in the house, I'm eating it. I, I got to throw it out. Otherwise, I, I, that is that takes a lot of uh, strength. That's incredible. Similar to you, Natalia? Uh, excuse me. Let me bring the mic closer so you can hear me. <laughs> so I know take like discipline. you said, I just go ahead. No, it takes discipline to move that mic over. Yeah, I was can you hear me joke. now? <laughs> yeah. um, I know she says I just show up and it appears that I just show up and I'm like, haha, whatever. But uh, my family was very strict. Um, really? Not white, Anglo, whatever yours was. But <laughs> mine was <laughs> definitely not. No. Um, but very strict, um, very traditional. Um, I was always taught, you know, you come home and you do your homework before you go out to play. And that mm. is what I do to this day. I do my work until, unless, I mean, I do my work and then I go out and play. If mm. my work is not done, I cannot go play. And, and a lot of times my work is not done and I won't sit down. And if I, I feel like I'm being lazy, if I'm sitting down, cause I've got dishes to do, I've got to clean the floor. I've got to water the plants. I've got to feed the dogs. Like you've got shit you need to do, get up and do it, you know, mm. and then you can sit down at the end of the evening or at the end of the day friends will call me to go out. And even, I mean, even when I was in my twenties, like I would get everything done so that I could go out before I went out and you just, that's what I do. Uh -huh. And I do work a lot. <laughs> yes. She does work a lot. Yes, I'm a worker of and my family you taught you, you know, that's my grandfather came, you know, escaped world war two and came to England and basically built a house and lived in that house and was very proud of his house. And I kind of done the same thing. Like I've built onto my house and I'm proud of what I have. And you should be proud of what you've worked for. And I am. It's interesting that with, with the kind of, with the Scottish and the English background, it's not terribly known for their food and their cuisine. You're in this kind of career. Well, if you'd listen to some of the other episodes of the podcast, <laughs> ah. I'm not actually English. I'm Serbian. Uh, so my grandfather escaped Yugoslavia during World War II and came to England. And when you do that, when you escape a country, you, you escape with other people and you course. build a culture. So okay. I didn't have, because you are 100% correct, except <laughs> for fish and chips. Yeah. And Indian food. And Indian food. <laughs> right. Which even the Indians will tell you is better in London than it is in yeah. India. I have heard The English that. food is shit. <laughs> so we didn't, I didn't grow up on, on that. I, didn't, I grew up on all Serbian food. All the time. I grew up on country cooking because mm -hmm. ah. my grandfather um, had a dairy farm. Actually, it had every kind of animal you can imagine that he raised, but he had a big dairy farm and my mom grew up feeding ranch hands. Hmm. 
So yeah, yeah. So my so my history, my 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 uh, cooking genes date back to that. I, I spend some time in uh, in South Carolina in Charleston, where they call it Low Country, right? Low Country f- food, and uh, that's a bit. I mean, that's a lot of grits and shrimp and boiled that's peanuts. A whole different and world. That's from, a very different world from yeah. uh, from what we had. Yeah, yeah. We're, it's amazing. We're closer to soul food. You are closer to soul food. Yeah. Ah. And and I think with food like that, you have to take food and make it go a long way. Yeah. Because you're trying mm. to feed so many people. My family did that too, but there weren't many of us. So I don't know what the fuck they were doing because I sure <laughs> as shit can't even cook for four people. I'm cooking for like 16. Because because at my grandmother's house, people would show up and then you needed to have food to feed them. Mm. Nobody shows up at my house. I don't no. know what I'm doing. I mean, like if I invite you, you're coming over. But I, if you're not invited, I don't even answer the door. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah, talking about making things that last. Isn't that the source of the hush puppies? They kind of roll things up and yeah, yeah, fry them. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a soup. Soup's the same way. You know, there's a lot of things. Yeah, Candace's favorite. I hate soup, <laughs> but it is like a leftover. It is empty out your fridge kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, even the Italian a pizza was just last night's dinner on some dough, then they put it in the oven. Uh, and you know, that's what my relatives say. That's where pizza or a pizza came from. And I live in New Haven, uh, where, you know, I'll, I'll swear it's the best pizza in the United States, but you know, they do a very different, they're very thin and, uh, uh, Neapolitan style, but pizza is again, is a whole nother area, right? Uh, high temperatures, people spend a lot of money on these pizza ovens and, uh, I don't know, flatbread. A lot of people try to do it, but don't do it well, but it's still good. Nobody ever turns down pizza, even if it's bad. It's a yeah. weird thing about pizza. I mean, it's a bunch of food on some bread. I mean, why right. not? Like, <laughs> I, I, you know. <laughs> and if it tastes like shit, then add some cheese and some spicy stuff and dip it in something. Exactly. And it's Ranch. still bread. Mm, I'd rather <laughs> dip it in some like buttery garlic sauce, but whatever. <laughs> Whatever's it's handy. When it's bread and buttery Ranch garlic ice cream. sauce. Oh my god. So we're we're. I don't know if you've watched any of our social media. We're on Instagram. We're on TikTok. We're yes. On Facebook, and sometimes I make Candace do stupid shit. And yesterday, uh, we bought. Uh, there's ranch flavored ice cream. I don't know if you've seen this anywhere. No, no. Um, and I was like, oh, is it Van get- Loen? Van Loen, yeah. the, the big ice cream purveyor. I was like, we're going to get this and make Candace eat it on camera and watch her like spit it out and like claw it out of her mouth. And blah, blah, blah. And she was like, oh, it's not that bad. I was like, what? What's yeah, happening here? Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, it was different. Yeah. So you scooped it and didn't tell her what it was? Yeah, she knew. No, she we had the I wouldn't let her like smell it or anything. Like, yeah, I was just like, just take a bite, like, and let's see what happens. Yeah, it looked like Hidden Valley Ranch. It's what it says on the package. Yeah. It tasted. It did taste like Andy's right. It tasted like that veggie dip. Yeah, like, it tasted more like a. But it was dip. sweet. Uh, there was a sweetness to it. It wasn't awful, but. I yeah. Don't know what you're going to do. Yeah. With what are you, the it's not one of those things where you're going to say, oh, God, I got to have some ranch <laughs> ice cream ice when cream. I get home. Yeah. Big old scoop of it. No. Yeah. Oh I, yeah. I don't know what, you, yeah, yeah. I don't know what you would do with it, but uh, I haven't stopped to think long enough about it. But I'm sure there could be some kind of interesting sauce or something we you could, could do make, with it. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll go we'll back to that. Back <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was speaking to a nutritionalist recently, and yeah, don't ever look at the ingredients of that hidden ranch valley. I mean, there's, oh, no. there's no actual food involved. No, there, not no. at all. It tastes like shit. Like, there's, I'm, not a fan. I'm sorry, but it's disgusting. There's very if homemade. Now, I have had homemade ranch. Yeah, sure. And it's delicious. Yes. The shit you buy at the store. Yeah, well, people, yeah. I don't. Because they don't know any better. Yeah, yeah they don't. They grow up with it. I, you know, when I get wings occasionally, they say ranch or blue cheese. I say, blue cheese? Give me the, anyway, that's chunks of blue cheese. And they really, they like they it. probably do put some, they molest it somehow probably, right? <laughs> yeah, but I do like, you don't like wings and blue cheese? What do you do? No, that's what I prefer over the ranch. They oh, ask yeah, ranch oh, yeah, or yeah, blue yeah, cheese. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've been to Buffalo, the home of the of the, uh, of the wings, and you know they're 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 just as they're good everywhere else. They're just yeah, I don't they My go crazy about Buffalo. So as soon as ah. he came into our life, he was like blue cheese, blue cheese, yeah, Only blue cheese, blue yeah, cheese. yeah, this yeah. When I make a salad for my daughter, I just get some balsamic vinegar and some uh, olive oil, and I put you know mix it up and some I don't know whatever spices I have on top and. That's hard. it. She loves yeah. it. Yeah. 
I well, mean, it's to maybe two minutes. We try all the time because they're super easy. Yeah. Yes. You know, that's all yeah. I do anymore, really. Yeah. Th there's shops that have vinegar tasting where they, yeah. they infuse it with fruits and spices. And it's, it's, uh, it's become like this, uh, this, uh, it's, it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. It gets a bad rap being vinegar, but just put that with some great olive oil. And my goodness, that's all you need. I Me too. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So what motivates you? I, Candace or, or Natalia, who wants to go first? <laughs> <laughs> you say food? <laughs> um, I like to have fun. <laughs> mm. So if, and honestly, if what we did or do, if it wasn't fun, I wouldn't do it. Right. And so there always has to be an element of, I have to enjoy, you know, I, I don't like to say it or think about it, but I don't have as much time left as many people do on this earth. And, and it's, and life is too short to not really enjoy and, and get a lot of uh, satisfaction out of what you do. Because if you, if you're still working, you do that a lot. I mean, you do yeah. that more than you do anything else yeah. and you better enjoy it. That's very true. You better have someone that you can show up with every day and have a good time That's with. Nice. So it is nice to have each other. Yep. But even when I say food, like, I mean, I love gardening and planting and like even from mm. the beginning, you know, and seeing that grow and then picking it and eating it. And I mean, that's motivation for me and the sun and the water and just all that hippy dippy shit yeah. that I like, you know, I mean, that's motivating to me and helping other people. And I like she, she mentioned earlier, I mean, it really is one of the best things when people come back to class and they say, oh my God, we make that recipe all the time and we love it. Mm. And, and I just want to let you know, and that motivates us to keep going. Well, and that truly, I mean, that that's our mission. I mean, it tr and we live it every class is that we want people to cook more at home and enjoy yeah. it yeah. because you can. Cooking is not horrible. And it really is hard. an enjoyable activity and you don't Absolutely. have to make it hard. Mm -hmm. And generally when you cook at home, it's healthier. Oh, well, and yes. You know, you, you watch your portions and, you know, you know I'm in the tech food. and that's it. Everybody's enjoying it. You know, we, I, I entertain often, uh, and, and I, I like to even bake my own bread. You know, it's just a couple of ingredients and you just mix it up some, sometime. you put some different spices in it. By the way, I took, I got a hard lesson and you probably, you probably know this, but, uh, you know, I got the dough together and you put the yeast in and I remember I put some, uh, uh, crushed garlic in one of them and uh the next day it didn't rise the garlic killed the yeast mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's funny. Look, you it's already know this you already know this yeah yeah so people out Science. there don't do that yeah it is it really is and i've had people that say they're they're um oh what, what when they can't eat the bread with um gluten yeah gluten, gluten free. Free. yeah they're gluten, they're gluten free. yeah gluten intolerant and then when they have fresh bread like that, it doesn't bother them. You know, even when they go to, you know, uh, in Italy, they invented, you know, uh, uh, what do they call it? Farm to table, right? mm -hmm, from the table. Mm -hmm. Like I would bring my friends to Italy and we'd have uh, my, you know, my relatives would argue over who gets to feed us, right? You know, you know how that is. And they'd pull eggs out of the cupboard. And my friend's like, well, what? there's going to be beaks in those eggs. I said, no, those eggs just came from the farm. They don't need to be refrigerated. Yeah. And the refrigerators are small because they, you know, like you said, Natalia, they just, everything, whatever, whatever's in season is what they cook. Yeah. Very, exactly. very different. We're yeah. spoiled here. Uh, I think so. we, I think you don't so think we are? You don't, you Explain. I don't think we're spoiled here because we don't get all the fresh stuff. We don't get all uh, the, you know. Well, I mean, we're spoiled by fast. all the yeah, all yeah. the availability, the convenience, because we don't have to yeah. worry about whether it's seasonal, I agree. right? It's, you know. it's not spoiled because I miss. Yeah, because uh, I see I see tomatoes sometimes in the store, and they're just this shade of orange that is like, I, why would you? These things need to sit, and I, they're they're I, I hear they're like sprayed with oxygen or something to kind of accelerate their growth mm -hmm. or something like that because they're. You know, in the winter here, we, we can't get them, so they bring them from the other winter climates. And ah, uh, uh, oh, God, I just uh, your energy, your energy on your podcast is just wonderful. The way the way 
you know, it's become one of my favorites. It's just you, you pick oh, a topic, you. and the way you two weave in, w w into a, another on these on these great topics is just it's just absolutely wonderful. Uh, how do you measure success? Well, it's not with money. <laughs> but you have to learn that because you think that when you're young. I mean, yeah. I think right. We all did, right. I mean, you're all you strive and you. I got to work hard and make all the money and all the money and all the money and I'm get home and I'm pissed and I'm miserable and I'm depressed and I can't sleep and that's not. Success. I hate everyone I work yeah. with. I hate everyone. I hate everyone. <laughs> I hate everyone. <laughs> so that's not success. I think we're. I mean, I. I think I'm thankful every morning that I get up that I don't have to get up at five o'clock. I don't hate my job. I'm mm. happy. I can do the things that I want to do, and I have time to do that before I go into work and. Going into work to me doesn't feel like work. So to me, that's successful. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And my, uh, my older daughter, again, I, I talk about her often cause she's pretty special, but she's been reading a book called the psychology of money. And she said, one of the things that's, that influences people usually either to the better or to the worse is the concept of enough, right? Mm. What is enough? And, and, you know, of course there's stories about all these, you know, gazillionaires who They're they miserable. lost all of their money because yeah. there was never enough. Right. And so I just think about that a lot as, you know, what is enough and do I have enough? And it's like, yes, yes. yes. Be thankful for what you have. Enough is enough. Yes. Mm. Mm. I have what I need, but not what I want. You know, you kind of hear that, uh. Strive. Often, I think it's good to strive for more. Always, I don't think yes. you just stop and you settle and, and you're you boring. Yeah. yeah, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, also in that time, don't forget to be grateful for what you've already achieved and what you have. And that's hard sometimes when you're always go go go. Yeah, and I think a lot of you know, I'll, uh, I'm I'm one of those people where I think sometimes I'm running as fast as I can to say just to stay in one spot. Mm. But then, and I and when I get into that, then I <laughs> I'm a Scorpio, so I have a lot of Scorpio angst. And I so, um, I, and then I just stop and I say, look, look at all, look at what I've accomplished. Look at where we are. Look at, look at, you know, the things that we've done that I've been wanting to do for a very long time. So I'm grateful for that. And yeah, I'm going to keep on running, but, um, I also know that what we've got is, is pretty special. Mm, it certainly is. I think one of the greatest things about cooking, by the way, is that, if you mess up, so you have a bad meal or you don't eat it and you, you, you move on, you learn and you just get to do something yourself. I, I was saying before I'm in the tech business and, you know, a lot of times I work on these projects and I just have a little part of it and then it runs away from me. I just, there's something about the sensation of going into a kitchen. It's all clean. Be put, making a mess, cooking, people participating, and I, I, I used to work as a, a chef in, in a hospital during college, and so I you learn to clean as you go. So you know, and then when everybody's done eating, everything's all cleaned up, and I walk out of the the sensation I have of just seeing a project from beginning to end, and and having people enjoy it is just wonderful. I don't see it in any other thing that I do, and it's very very rewarding. Uh, agreed. Yeah, agreed. agreed. I mean, there are times that we get done with class and people are like, well, what do you, you know, do you guys want to eat? And we're like, no, no, no. Like we want to watch you eat. And I, mm. and then I'm like, well, that sounds weird. But, um, <laughs> it's there's the same a thing. satisfaction to watching people and it's not what I do we the same cook, thing. What they yeah. Eat, yeah. yeah. Know? And watching them eat it and go, like, you know, and they're talking to yeah. each other and like, well, and they'll also, the, I always, I get a kick out of them saying, thank you so much. And it's like, you made it. Yeah, we didn't do right. anything. We didn't do anything. Yeah. Right. We yelled at you, you know, for we, two yeah. hours. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't cook. <laughs> we forced you to do it, but. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. When I entertain, you know, with, with my girlfriend, she has her friends over, you know, I don't know, 10, 15 people. And, you know, you kind of cook all day and just seeing them enjoying it. And I end yeah. up kind of eating as you cook. So you don't really eat with them, but you're there and you're having some wine and just seeing them enjoying it and seeing their reaction is, mm -hmm. is, is so rewarding. Is there such thing as too much garlic? Mm, uh, raw garlic. Yes. Mm. I would say raw garlic. And I have found that out the hard way because I agree. I put garlic and onions in almost every fucking thing I eat. I Me love too. Garlic. I love garlic. I love Me onions. too. But I've Me got too. to that point where I've put so much in something that it's almost like spicy. Like it's almost like mm. more It burns your tongue. It's burn, it uh, burns. Yeah. Yeah. So there is. It can yeah. be. But yeah. if you're cooking it, no. Cooking it, probably not. 
Right, when you're raw, yeah. I remember uh, we took a class at one of the big chains, uh, my girlfriend and I, and it, the, we were, the recipe just called for like one kind of clove of, of garlic. And I said, why bother? Let's put some more in there. Why, let's, let's get this thing going. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then all of a sudden I get called an Italian and, you know, these kinds of things. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> again, uh, and another thing, by the way, in Italy, they're amazed about how much garlic we use here. Hey, I was just going to tell you when I, because my, my, okay, my daughter again, she's, yeah. she's, a. She probably was an Italian in a former life, but she's, she, she lives in Italy a lot of the time yeah. and she speaks fluent Italian and has many friends in, uh, in a little town called Trieste, which is North. And one night, uh, I was there with her and we were out and getting pizza and I got this pizza that had garlic on it and they just, they would not leave me alone on how much garlic was on this pizza. And I said, it's delicious. No, too much garlic, too much. I said, no, you can't have too much garlic yeah. on this. So the North, yes, is very sensitive to garlic. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah. It's, it's even in our country, how just different foods in, in different areas, how they vary. And, uh, just, just give it to me. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, you know what I mean? I just, what's so I don't, I'm not allergic to anything. I, I don't, you know, let's, let's go. Let's just, let's exactly. see what you, let's see what you do. And, uh, uh, let's have fun ladies. Thank you so much for your time today. My goodness. I mean, uh, now I'm hungry. Um, <laughs> I do. I was yeah. Thinking the same yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, it, it, uh, it's so fun. You guys, how can we get in touch with you? Uh, well, our website, actually, we're, we're um, developing a brand new website. Um, it goes live April 15th, actually. And it's rather than uh, our old call name, it's going to be just simply thegirlcancook.com. And we're going to start off with our online recipe collection there. So that's a subscription where people can, they, you can see us all the time. Yes, it's what you mm. always wanted. <laughs> so monthly we do, we drop four to six videos um, of wow. specific recipes uh, to that we think people would, you know, that would add to their cooking repertoire. And so thegirlcancook.com is our website. And Facebook and Instagram. Yes, and TikTok. On, very special. I do cocktails on Sundays on TikTok if you're on TikTok. Um, and then our podcast is not a single fork anywhere you would listen to podcasts. Not a single fork. Great name. Great. You go you. about 30 minutes. You two weave. You have a topic. You go off of it. It's great. You come back. <laughs> it's all about <laughs> cooking. Uh, it, it's fun. And you could tell, you could just sense the, you know, the love you have for each other and the friendship and the, 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 the passion for cooking is great too. The, the, the girl uh, can cook school.com. I visited as well, but that's, yes, that's our current website. Ah, I see. I yes. see. Very good. Well, ladies, it was an absolute pleasure. And, uh, by the way, do you ever cook with coffee? Cook with, no, I, I drink coffee. coffee. Yeah, I put coffee on ice cream. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the, well, I'm, you, you can know, put it in a rub. Tiramisu. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Tiramisu. I had red gravy. Oh yeah. Uh, red eye gravy. And, Red, that's it, red, and they use uh, you know, I never had a cup of coffee my whole life, so I just, I oh, don't, wow. yeah, I don't, yeah. yeah. Wow, look at that look, Natalia, Whoa. yeah, <laughs> yeah, I never had a cup, yeah. I mean, at this point, I'm 55 years old, why start, right? What do you uh, do? but do you just snort a bunch of cocaine to get up in the morning, <laughs> or what? Like, you drink I'm so boring, I intermittent fast, I only eat like twice a day, but I, I, I try to make sure the meals are good, and uh, I just drink water in the morning, it's pretty boring, oh, I know, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, but uh, but um. My point is, I loved red eye gravy. Um, it was a family, somebody, somebody, a friends in Denver. That you know, they brought it, they brought it over. But I think it's like a Alabama, Arkansas kind of thing. But uh, the way people use those kinds of ingredients is in, in, in food is incredible as well. Look, I just went off on a tangent. Thank you so much for <laughs> your time you. today. It was a great pleasure. I hope one day uh, if I make it to Tulsa, we can meet. And uh, I was going to say have a, have a cup of coffee, but I think wine would be much better. Wine would be great. Especially since you don't drink coffee. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. Ladies, thank you so much. You be well. You do the you same. Thanks.
Thank you for listening and or viewing Joey Pinn's Discipline Conversations. Please share this episode with one or two of your friends who you think may benefit from the episode. Our website, www.joeypins.com. There you find lots of resources and you could join our mailing list. Please follow us on all our social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Podcast information, the video version of our podcast is on YouTube. Please subscribe. Audio is on all major podcasting platforms. Please follow them. And if you like it, please consider giving five-star rating. Would really appreciate that. Would you like to financially support the podcast? You can go to our Patreon site. Consider $5, $10, or $20 a month. There's all kind of plans that we have there. There's like a one-time payment. What is this podcast episode worth to you? $25, $50, $100, $500, $1,000, $5,000. You be the judge. You can go to our PayPal account to do that as well. Thank you again for listening or watching Joey Pinn's Discipline Conversations.